Hi, I'm Mike Crowley and today at Fluid Mechanics I'm going to explain waterfall flow in pipes. Waterfall flow occurs when you get um, gas such as air trapped in the top of pipes which restricts the flow. Usually this is going to be occurring in the high points of the pipe. It's a special case of two-phase flow. Two-phase flow is when you've got gas and liquid traveling along a pipe. In the case of waterfall flow, some of the gas is stuck, is stationary, usually at the high points. This can lead to um, noise, pressure loss in the system, and in certain systems it can lead to unbalanced flow. In this lesson today, I'm going to explain when this is likely to occur and how to calculate its effect. And I'll also explain some solutions to the potential problem. I will explain this phenomenon shortly at Fluid Mechanics. In most um, hydraulic systems, there will always be some gas. Of course, the most um, common type of gas is air in water. I suppose that's 90% or at least over half the percent, half the cases, this is where waterfall flow will occur. The gas will collect in the high points, forming pockets of gas. These pockets cause a restriction. This reduces the flow area and increases the pressure loss and increases noise. In this lesson, I will show you how to identify when there is a potential problem with waterfall flow and how to calculate the pressure drop. This sketch shows a um, typical hydraulic system or fluid system. We have a tank with a fluid in it, with a pipe connected to a pump, and then the pipe goes along horizontally, then up, horizontal, down, horizontal, and then up to a header tank. At this point here, when the flow starts to go down, the actual flow is got a, it's got a, a negative um, flow gradient. So in other words, the flow is going in downwards and it's a negative gradient. It's at this point here that the there is potential for gas to be trapped at that um, at that point there. Where can the gas come from? Um, well, the gas can be in the in the pipework before you fill up up the system. So in other words, when you first prime the system, there could be gas in there and you haven't got rid of it all. Or alternatively, you could get gas entrained in the system coming out of the fluid. So if, if you've got a tank here and the suction to the tank, you could actually be sucking t um, gas in from the, from, from, the, from the air. Or alternatively, if you've got a hydrocarbon, it could be oil, you could have gas in, you could have um, hydrocarbons in there and, and um, hydrocarbon gases. They could come out of solution. If you've got high temperatures, um, water could actually vaporize. <laughs> I suppose that, that's another, another type of, uh, of gas bubble that could actually form at the top of the, the tank. Or alternatively, if the pipe is very high, then effectively the pressure drops and gas can come out of solution. There's, lo there's lots of reasons why the gas could come out of solution. And what you'll find is there is potential for the gas to get trapped at these high points here. Now, in this sketch, I've shown orthogon orthogonally driven, drawn pipes just going up, across and down. But even if the pipes are very shallow angled, um, there is still a high point. There is still a negative um, flow gradient. And at the high points, there is um, potential for gas to get trapped. So if we move on a bit, let's look at the next slide. And um, what I'm trying to show here is what um, pressure or head you're going to require to drive the fluid along the, the pipe. So typically for a system like this, you've got to do the, the, the tank where you're taking the fluid is at one level here and it's pumping the fluid up to a higher level here. And the, the head difference between the, the two tanks is H1. For a given flow rate along that pipe, there will also be a um, friction head loss along, along the pipe. And, and if we come down to this formula here, the total head that the pump has to deliver or the system has to deliver to pump a given flow along the pipe, H, is HF plus H1. Now, normally with sort of water hydraulic systems, you um, talk in terms of head. 
for other types of people they might be wanting to talk in terms of pressure pressure head it's much the same thing it's just different type to different types of units um, if we did this in terms of pressure well then the pressure would be the friction pressure lost due to friction okay plus rho gh in other words the density of the fluid times the gravitational constant times h1 and for water the density would be around about a thousand and the gravity is 9.81 so moving on a bit further to the next slide and we can then see what happens when we actually get um, a, an air bubble in the system initially and I'm showing the the air bubble just there I say air bubble gas whatever the whatever the gas is so 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 for air any gas it's, it's the same same effective thing um, we have an air bubble there and it's collected at the um, the high point um, at, at the start of the ne negative pressure gradient what determines whether the bubble will stop there or obviously if you or, or be moved along by the fluid so in other words as the flow is coming along along the pipe and tries to push it down the the negative gradient the bubble has got its its buoyancy and it's trying to come back up okay so there is a balance between the rate at which the fluid is going down the pipe and the rate at which the bubble wants to come up and if the rate at which the bubble wants to come up is greater than the fluid going down then the bubble is going to stay up at the top if you've got high enough velocity the bubble will just be pushed pushed on and you won't get this phenomenon so um, what what things affect whether you're going to get the bubble there well obviously the first thing is the velocity of the fluid in in the pipe the next thing is the viscosity of the fluid obviously if you've got a higher viscosity fluid um, the rise rate of the bubble is going to be lower so it's going to be moved moved along in this particular case here I've shown a, a vertical pipe going down but the angle of the pipe is obviously very important um, vertical pipe is the worst case scenario but of course you could have a, a very shallow angle pipe it, it could still rise up to the top even in a very shallow raised um, pipe but um, it's less likely to other things that affect the um, the the effect of a bubble is the um, density of the fluid water is usually one of the more dense fluids so so, so and, and the least viscous so that's why it's probably most more likely to happen in water pipes than any other type of pipe um, and the other thing that affects it actually is the the pipe size as well trying to model or determine beforehand whether um, you're going to get this bubbles coming collecting at that point is actually quite difficult it's it's a bit down to experience and knowing what the velocity is down here um, so what what people should try and do at the design stage is first of all try and avoid this type of um, negative flow gradients or try and make sure that the pipe work is always on the rise now that's easier said than done um, if this was a water main going over a hill or something what you could probably what you could try and do is have a gradual incline so instead of going up and over try and go straight across easier said than done and in lots of cases you just have got no choice you have to go up and down um, so the next thing to ask yourself is well is it a problem I mean if you're only dropping a, a short distance well maybe you can just live with that and, and we'll come up to and I'll, I'll explain shortly um, how to calculate what the pressure loss is due to due to the to the bubble now if the air bubble is stable there what's going to happen is that the air bubble is going to start air or gas bubble is going to start to grow so if I move on to the next slide what will happen is is that you have the bubble and it will grow so in other words as more gas comes along it will start to collect at the um, at the high point and the bubble will start to grow the air bubble will continue to grow until the air bubble is large enough to get to the bottom here to this position and then it will stop growing any excess air that comes along or gas that comes along then will then just be swept along and effectively this is as big as the bubble can get so now the term waterfall flow or why they use the, the word waterfall flow is more obvious what's actually happening is you've got the air bubble there and the flow is dropping down there effectively that's why it's called waterfall flow 
and the energy loss in the system is actually the head difference from there to there. This energy loss or head loss and, and, and the fact that it's called waterfall flow is true even if the pipe is um, inclined at an angle. If the pipe is inclined at an angle and there is a bubble of air on top of the, the flow, as it runs down the incline, the energy is lost and you still lose that amount of, he of, of head. So always in waterfall full flow, flow cases, the energy loss is effectively the, the level change whether it's inclined pipe or whether it's um, a vertical pipe like I've shown in this in this example. If we now look at the formulas that we had previously for the for the for the pressure and the head, there's a new term to add to the head formula. Basically, the head now has this additional term added in here, H2, or in terms of the pressure, you've added this additional term which is rho g h2. This increase in head or pressure it all depends on how the system is designed, but if you had a centrifugal pump there, what that would mean is that you would get slightly less flow and a slightly increased pressure. It all depends on the type of pump and the type of system, but it will definitely um, re have, an, it will have another energy loss in the system and it's likely to increase the pressure loss and um, reduce the flow. So moving on to the next sketch, um, what can we do about this um, this air bubble or how can we mitigate it? As I said, we could try and design it out. But if, if we have got an air bubble there or a gas bubble that we need to control, um, the only real way to do it is you've got to basically put a valve at the high point and bleed the gas off. Um, commonly, there's two ways of doing this. I've shown two types of valves, one on top of each other. But first, the first valve there is just a simple isolation valve. And basically, um, you just bleed the gas out with a manual valve. Um, this is typical, similar to the sort of thing that you might see on a radiator, a bleed valve. These type of valves are very useful where you're trying to prime a system, where it's the first time, and then once you've got the air out, you know there's going to be no more air introduced into the system. But if there's a continual supply of air coming into the system, well, then that's not much good. And if you need to get rid of the air and you can't live with the problem, then what you have to do is put in an automatic um, air vent valve. And this is shown on top. Now, normally when you have an, an automatic air vent valve, in front of that, you have an isolation valve as well, because sometimes these can be these type of valves can be a bit problematic and start to leak. So they usually have an isolation valve and then an air vent valve and the air vent valve. Um, what it is is basically it's in, inside there there's a there's a little float and when there's gas in the chamber at the top there the float sinks and the gas can escape and then when it's when the chamber's full of fluid the 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 float rise, rises and blocks off the flow um, they're not these air vent valves are not suitable in all cases um, it is possible that the pressure inside the pipe there is lower than the external atmospheric pressure, in which case when you open the air vent, air will come in, or gas will come in rather than go out. So you just got to be a bit, little bit careful of, of, of using those type of valves. In terms of living with this situation, you've got to ask yourself, well, you know, may, maybe the pressure loss due to H2 is not significant. So therefore, well, we'll just allow the pump or the system, we'll design the pump to, to just cope with it and just accept the fact that you've got um, a pressure loss at that part of the system. So if I show the next slide to finish off, um, what I'm trying to show here is um, a long pipe work that you might get say for a water main or something like that or an oil main and this this pipeline could be tens of kilometers long and what you'll tend to find is the pipe may have to go over many um, inclines or hills, small hills, or just to follow the contours of the land. And so effectively the pipe will go up and then go back down again. And this increase in level here could be 10, 20 metres. And of course, if you've got a number of these hills that it's going over, if you don't do something about the, the gas that's going to collect in the top of the pipe, um, then you're going to have um, head, head losses again added on to head losses, added on to head losses. So generally in those type of situations, people do put in or, or 
they, they usually do put in automatic air vent valves. In water mains, typically um, the flow velocity is actually a relatively low. So these big long mains, that, that, that because obviously they're trying to keep the pressure losses down. So the flow velocities are low and there is significant chance of gas um, getting um, collected at the top. And the actual the diameters are quite large as well. So in summary, try to avoid counter gradients or negative flow gradients where you can. Um, if you can't avoid them, well, then maybe you can just live with them or you need to calculate the, the pressure loss due to the, um, the, the waterfall flow or the counter gradient. And uh, I've shown in the video how to actually calculate that. If you have any general questions on this, please leave a comment on my website and I will endeavour to answer them on my blog, that is. Um, I won't be able to answer any general questions um, directly, but I will endeavour to answer them if you leave comments on my website and my blog. If you need detailed hydraulic advice on a sort of consultancy basis, then please contact me directly. My contact details are again given on my website. That's it today from Fluid Mechanics. Thank you for listening.